Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Chan. I am coming to you live from Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts, here to bring you live coverage of this high school football matchup between the hosting Braintree High Womps and the visiting Brookline High Warriors. Scoreboard clock reads, we've got just over four minutes left for the start of this game. Uh, starting a little later than was initially expected. Initial time for kickoff was supposed to be 4.30. Got uh, pushed back a little bit. <laughs> uh, and my apologies to Jiffy Y. I'm sorry your, your ice cream was melting. You should, you should have brought it out here. Ice cream wouldn't be melting out here. It's a, a brisk temperature out here. Uh, raw temperature reads at about the mid-40s, uh, but a noticeable cool breeze giving us a bit of a wind chill here. Um, so I appreciate everyone's patience. I thank you all for waiting. We should be getting uh, the action underway soon. Should make for a pretty interesting matchup, these two teams. Uh, very different stylistically. You could just see as the two teams were warming up, Brookline practicing out of uh, their typical spread formations, multiple receivers, one back to the right, standing right next to the quarterback, while Braintree was warming up out of the flex bone formation, which is a very run heavy formation. Um, you'll see it when, uh, when the game gets underway. You got uh, the quarterback, uh, and then one uh, fullback right behind him, and then two halfbacks lined up in almost tight end positions next to the tackles, and one of those halfbacks will go in for uh, go in motion behind the fullback t uh, before the play starts. You'll be seeing a lot of that from the Womps today, while well, you'll be seeing a lot more passing plays from Brookline, most likely. So the two teams have now finished warming up. They've both gone to their respective sides of the sidelines. Clock reads just over two minutes before we get this one started. Well, I can uh, I can hear behind me the PA announcer trying to make an announcement. Um, I can't hear anything though. Uh, well, I can barely hear because he's right behind me, but I can't hear anything over the speakers. So that's it's too bad. But got about a minute and a half left before things get started. Two team ca uh, two sets of team captains getting ready to come out for the opening coin toss for Braintree. They have number six, Will Pistorino, number 64. That is, oh, that is hard to find on their roster. Ah, 64, John Pistorino, number 72, James Lannan, and finally, number 33, John Doherty. Those are the four captains for Braintree. As the coin gets sent up in the air. It looks like Braintree has won the toss and elected to defer to the second half, so Brookline will be getting the ball to start this game. They came out here with their captains, number two, Adrian Pinto, number 15, Oscar Baldwin, number 50, Damian Halfkenny, number 61, Seth Bradley, and number 88, Finn Foley. So it looks like Brookline will receive the opening kickoff and will be playing from my left while Braintree plays from my right. And the two teams, after getting themselves pumped to get this game underway, they have moved to their respective sidelines 
and soon we'll be lining up for the opening kickoff. So the hosting Braintree High Womps send their kickoff unit out onto the field. While Brookline sends their return unit out. Looks like kicking for Braintree will be at number 43, Ryan Brooks. Brookline's got two back deep. Looks like they got number six, Adrian Bryant. And guy whose jersey number is a little hard to see from this distance. But I think it's number 20, Xavier Costello. Braintree now lining up. We're about to get this game underway. Brooks signals. The kick is off. It's a squib, and we are getting this one underway. It's a short kick, and oh, he failed to fall on it. Braintree recovers. Braintree recovers on an, I guess, unintentional onside kick. I don't even know what to call that. Recovered by number 22, Ryan Boyle. The return man, Xavier Costello, tried to fall on it. But he just kind of missed. I think they expected the squib kick to bounce a little further. And instead, it'll be Braintree starting with the ball at the Brookline 22-yard line. First and 10, quarterback James Tellier out of the shotgun in the flex bone. They send a man in motion, take the snap, give to the motion man. That is number 16, and he's burrowing on ahead. Shuck off one tackle and got himself a decent gain right there. That was number 16, Steve Luongo on the carry. Got himself a pretty nice gain. Looks like he got down to about the 14, maybe the 13. So an eight or nine yard gain on first down. They come out in the flex bone once again. Man in motion, Tellier takes the snap, gives to the fullback this time. He burrows on ahead, hold to his left, and he's gonna barrel into the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown, Braintree. I believe that is indeed number 35, Henry Joyce. Henry Joyce with the 14 yard touchdown run. Braintree gets on the board in two plays. Now Brooks lining up for the PAT is what on earth? Uh, I'm not sure what that lineman was doing, but either way, the kick was missed. That, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So Brookline, certainly not the start they wanted. They start off by flubbing the opening kick giving Braintree prime field position and then two strong runs later and Braintree has a six nothing lead. 11 minutes and 10 seconds still left. 
in this first quarter. We're not that far into it so far, folks, but uh, one team is already on the board. Braintree lines up to kick off once again. And it'll be Ryan Brooks kicking off once again. He uh, certainly had some big success on his last kickoff as a squib kick turned into an inadvertent onsides kick. Brookline once again with two back. Signal, and here's the kick once again. Once again, it's short, and it bounces, and it looks like it's going to go out of bounds. Goes out of bounds around the 40-yard line anyway, so not too big of a difference. And now the Brookline offense gets a chance to see the field. It initially seemed like they were going to start with the ball after Braintree deferred, but the special teams gaffe has put them in a hole early. Quarterback Oscar Baldwin coming out with running back Pelayo Harais. They got their spread formation, three receivers to Baldwin's right, one to his left. Baldwin takes the snap. He fakes the give and they fumble it. I think Baldwin managed to fall on it. Braintree signaling that they've got it. But the refs say, no, you don't. So Brookline having some trouble holding on to the ball early in this game. Not sure if that was designed to be a handoff or a fake handoff, but either way, a tough loss of about three yards, I think. Once again, they come out. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Baldwin managed to take the snap this time. He rolls out to his right, decides to tuck it and run. He stiff arms one guy and barrels ahead for a pretty nice gain. Oscar Baldwin manages to cross midfield just barely on that run. Sets up third down and about three or four yards to go. So about a 10-yard run from Baldwin, who now comes out with an empty backfield. Three to his right, two to his left. He takes the snap, drops back, looking to his left, throws it out, and it's caught. And he's running down the sideline. And that's going to be a first down off a hard hit on the completed pass to number 81, Caetano Drinkwater. Simple out route there from Drinkwater. He was open, and Baldwin found him. And some nice yards after the catch sets Brookline up in some pretty decent field position there at the Braintree 35. First and 10. Baldwin takes a snap out of shotgun, immediately throws. It's Drinkwater once again for another nice gain as he gets wrapped up. So it'll be second down. And it looks to be about two or three yards to go. Scoreboard saying second and four from the Braintree 28. Man in motion, that's Adrian Pinto. Baldwin takes the snap, and he fakes the give, and he throws the screen out to Pinto. Pinto is going to take it and run for the first down, and a little bit more. He's still dragging the pile. We'll see where they mark him out. But a nice design screenplay off the motion from one co-captain to the other, Oscar Baldwin to Adrian Pinto. So Brookline moves the sticks once again. Their offense making things work. Come out and shotgun again. Two receivers on either side. Baldwin takes the snap, fakes the give, runs to his left. Looks like he's going to take it himself. He does take it himself, and he's going to barrel ahead for a decent gain. Second down and about five from the 15-yard line. 
Baldwin takes the snap. He rolls to his right, looking for something to do. He's running out of room. He's going to tuck it and run, and he dives ahead. And it looks like he's got the first down. Oscar Baldwin's showing he is not just a threat through the air, but also on the ground. He's had a few nice runs this drive thus far. And he's now got his team inside the 10. It's going to be first and a long goal to go from about the 9-yard line, or the 8, as the scoreboard says. Empty backfield here for Baldwin. Takes a snap and drops. Drops back, escapes the pressure, runs up the middle. Looks like he's going to get pretty close to the end zone there. Not quite. It's going to be second and goal from the Braintree one-yard line. Second and goal from the one. Baldwin in shotgun. Takes a snap, and he's going to take it himself, and he's going to get in there. Touchdown, Brookline. Oscar Baldwin with the one-yard keeper to tie this game up at six. Now that's how you respond to the kind of rough start that Brookline had after the flubbed kick return, followed by a quick two-play drive from Braintree. Brookline responds, methodically works their way down the field. Oscar Baldwin combining a couple of nice passes with a number of nice runs, ultimately finishing with the one-yard keeper. Lining up for the PAT, snap is down, kick is up, and no good. They're going to say wide left on the attempted kick by number three, Matt Richardson. So after two quick touchdowns and two quick P, uh, two missed PATs, score is all knotted up at six apiece. Once again, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan live here at Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts. A chilly April Fool's Day here to start things off. 8.43 is what remains on the clock here in the first quarter. And we're all knotted up at six apiece. Brookline has their kickoff unit out. Number three, Matt Richardson getting ready to kick it away. Richardson signals. Runs up and he's got a squib kick going. After the bounces, it is picked up by the Braintree returner. He's got a bit of a hole to work with, and he's going to take off. He's going to head towards the left side and ultimately get forced out of bounds by the kicker. That was Braintree's number three. On the run back, Cam Garrity. A nice return there by Garrity gets... Braintree already passed midfield and into Brookline territory. So for the second drive in a row, Braintree will start on Brookline's side of the field. They start at the Brookline 45. Braintree coming out in the flex bone as per usual. They send a man in motion, and they give it to the motion man. He runs to the left, and he's got a bit of a hole to work with, and he barrels ahead for a nice gain. That is number 11, Cam Grieve on the carry. And Braintree gets right back to work. As I said in the pregame, you can see the stylistic differences between these two teams. Braintree coming out in the run-heavy flex bone formation, while Brookline has the more pass-oriented spread formation. Brookline, uh, Braintree rather, starting over with first and 10. The give, and they've got a big hole to work with. He's streaking down the field. He's going to keep going. They might not catch him. Are they going to catch him? They're not. Touchdown, Braintree! They gave to the motion man again. That was Steve Luongo with the big 34-yard touchdown run. Some slick moves cutting through the holes there by Luongo. And Braintree 
their second two-play scoring drive of the game. Significantly longer this time, though. Looks like they're going for a two-point conversion this time, and they come out in the T formation this time. Snap, the give to Brooks. Brooks runs to his right, and it looks like he runs it in. Successful two-point try by Ryan Brooks. And Braintree increases their lead to 14-6. To that was a two. This was a two. Yeah, six, six, and two, so that's 14. <laughs> no worries, man, it's all good. Yeah, it was a two point conversion. They missed, yeah. So 14-6 to six the score, 7.58 left here in the first quarter. It's, it's uh, two, two teams trading blows so far. Another kick from Ryan Brooks who uh, got the two-point conversion. This time it is scooped up, and it's going to be run back by Brookline's number 26. He gets tackled at around the 33-yard line. That was number 26, Cameron Lazama. Brookline managed to score on their first drive of the game. They'll be looking to respond once again. Baldwin in the shotgun. Harais to his left. Three receivers to the left. To, uh, three receivers to Baldwin's right and one to his left. And he managed to get someone to jump. So Baldwin with the hard count manages to get his team five free yards. It'll be first and five from the Brookline 38 yard line. Harai is now playing from Baldwin's right. Still three receivers to the right, but they give to Harai. Harai runs to the left and has nowhere to go. So about no gain on that play. Second and five. Two receivers on either side of Baldwin. Harais to his right. Man in motion. Take the snap. And they give to Harais again. Harais has got a bit of an opening now. And it looks like he might be a yard, maybe half a yard short of the first down. We'll see where they spot him. Oh, they're going to give him the first down. Palayo Harais manages to convert on second and five after failing to get anywhere on first and five. Baldwin takes a snap from shotgun rolls to his right, still looking, decides to throw, and it's deflected. Nice defensive play by Braintree's number 83, Kevin McGurn. So it'll be second and 10 from the 44 yard line. Empty backfield, three receivers to the right, two to the left. Baldwin in shotgun. Baldwin takes the snap, takes a quick drop, rolls to his left, we're running out of room, we got a flag on the field and Baldwin just has to throw it away. Penalty is going to be holding on Brookline. So that's going to be a 10 yard penalty on Brookline's number 66, Avi Yosef.
So the brain tree defense starting to put a stand together, a deflected pass, and then forcing a holding penalty. Now has Brookline facing second and 20 from their own 25. Snap back to Baldwin, he drops back, unloads down the left side, looking for his man and he overthrows him. Long pass down the left sideline, looking for number 10, Jack Altman. Baldwin just overthrew his man. So it's gonna be third and long for Brookline. Brookline coming out, three receivers to the right, two to the left, uh, one to the left rather. Baldwin takes a snap, rolls to the right, looking for an option, running out of room. He unloads the throw. Did he hit his man? Did he catch that? Oh no, they're gonna say out of bounds. Adrian Pinto cannot believe the call. He thought he had the catch along the sideline. But the official call is incomplete. And so Brookline's drive stalls out. And facing a fourth and about 20 yards to go, Brookline will be forced to punt. Snap goes back, it's punted, a bit of a line drive punt with some high bounces. Keeps going, still going, still going. Very favorable Brookline bounce on the punt by Matt Richardson. It's ultimately downed on the Braintree, I believe 20, six yard line, or 27, according to the scoreboard. 621 left in the quarter, Braintree leads Brookline 14 to six. Braintree comes out in the flex bone once again. Send a man in motion, but they give to the fullback. I believe that's Joyce, and he runs right into a wall and goes nowhere. A nice defensive play by Brookline. Holds Henry Joyce to a gain of about two. It'll be second and eight from the 29. Second and eight. The receiver to the left in the flex bone. Man goes in motion and they give to the motion man. That's Luongo, runs to the right. He's got a bit of a hole to work with and it looks like he's gonna get the first down. It's gonna depend on where they spot him. And it looks like they're gonna give the first down to Steve Luongo. Gets him to about the 38 yard line. And so a fresh set of downs for the Womps. Tellier in shotgun. Man in motion. They give to the motion man and he's got some room to work with on the left. He cuts open a hole and manages to surge ahead. This might be another first down. That was Cam Grieve on the run. Braintree has shown a versatile set of runners, although Grieve limping off the field a little bit. But Grieve, Luongo, Joyce, and Ryan Brooks have all had some nice runs so far today. As the run-heavy offense of the Womps has been humming along. 
They got a man in motion, but they give to the fullback. That's Joyce again. He barrels ahead for a nice gain. Carried a couple of tacklers. For some substantial progress. Looks like it might have been about an eight or nine yard gain. So it'll be second down and about maybe two yards to go, maybe three. Ball on the Brookline 43-yard line. Tellier takes the snap. Gives to a man who runs to the left. He's got a bit of a hole. I think this is Luongo again, and he gets taken down at the left sideline. Finally stopped by Adrian Bryant. But Steve Luongo, another nice run. He's had quite a few of those long runs. Another fresh set of downs for Braintree as they move all the way to about the Brookline 24 or 25 yard line. First and 10 for Braintree. Send a man in motion. They give to the motion man, number 23. He shakes off a couple of tackles, but ultimately gets pulled down after what looked like a pretty nice gain. That is, I believe, the first carry of the game there for number 23, Mario Franciosa Johnson. So four yard gain there. Four or five yards, they put it about the 19 or 20 yard line on Brookline's side. Johnson in motion, but they give to Joyce. Joyce barrels up the middle, gets taken down after a short gain, but we'll see how short they mark it. Looks like it's going to be third and very short, maybe third and one for the Womps. And at the high school level, this is pretty much four down territory. So Braintree's got about two more tries to get this one yard for the first. They come out in the flex bone once again. It's Luongo in motion, and Luongo gets the give, runs to the right, cuts up ahead, gets the first down easily, and gets taken down inside the 10-yard line. A diverse cast of runners for the Womps, but the guy leading the way, without a doubt, has to be Steve Luongo. He's got the big 34-yard touchdown under his belt already, as well as several other lengthy runs. It'll be first and goal from the Brookline six-yard line. Tellier takes the snap, gives to the motion man, running to the left, heading for the end zone, and he's going to get there. That's Cam Grieve. Another touchdown for the Braintree offense. They have scored on every drive so far. And this time the score goes to number 11, Cam Grieve. Looks like they're going to go for a PAT again as they currently lead 20 to six. Brooks going for the kick. It's up and it's good this time. So the first successful PAT of the day. And with a minute eight seconds left here in the first quarter, the score is now Braintree 21, Brookline six. Braintree rushing offense 
has been humming along with no major setbacks at any point. I don't think they've had a single run go for no gain or for a loss. They're winning the war in the trenches right now. And while Brookline was able to overcome that on their first offensive drive to end with a one yard touchdown run for Oscar Baldwin, they've, they've certainly had trouble moving the ball on their last drive. They managed to get one first down, but then a deflected pass, a holding penalty, an overthrown long bomb, and then a throw that was ultimately declared out of bounds stopped them in their tracks. That was easily the longest drive that Braintree just had. They started on their own 27 yard line, their first drive starting on their own end. As the previous two uh, scoring drives they had started in Brookline's end. After the flubbed opening kickoff, they started on Brookline's 22. And then after a nice kick return by Cam Garrity, they started at Brookline's 45 on their second drive. But this one was a long sustained drive that got them 73 yards down the field, ultimately finishing with the six yard score by Cam Grieve. So after the successful PAT, Ryan Brooks lines up to kick it away. He sends another slow roller. Oh, it's juggled a bit, but Brookline ultimately recovers it this time. Slight scare there for the Warriors. As the first guy to the ball saw it go off his fingertips. But he had a teammate there to back him up. And so Brookline will start at around their own 38 yard line. Maybe the, actually I think the 37. They've always started in about this range, somewhere between the 30 and 40 yard line. Oscar Baldwin in shotgun, he's got a man in motion, takes the snap, but he gives to Harais. Harais runs up the middle, gets stuffed, but not before a solid about five yard gain. They come out and shotgun again. Two receivers on either side. Horizon to Baldwin's left. Takes the snap. They give to Horizon again, and he bounces out to the right and runs right into a wall. He gets taken down. Nice tackle on the play. I believe that was number 72, James Lannon. And so it'll be third down and about five or six yards to go for the Warriors. But it looks like they're just going to let the clock run out. So that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. Your score, the Braintree Wumps, 21. The Brookline Warriors, six. It's been nothing but scoring drives so far for the Braintree offense. They got an immediate boost off the first play of the game from their special teams. A weird bouncing squib kick by kicker Ryan Brooks was flubbed on the return by Brookline. They couldn't dive on it and it was recovered by Ryan Boyle, giving Braintree just 22 yards to go to the end zone. And they got that in two plays. After the missed PAT, they were up six nothing. Brookline took over at the 40 after an out of bounds kick. And then they drove down the field with a mix of passes and QB keepers ultimately scoring on one of those keepers a one-yard run by Oscar Baldwin. Tied things up at six, but also missed their PAT. Then after a strong kick return by Cam Garrity, Braintree once again started in Brookline territory at the 45, 
and two plays later it was a score by Steve Luongo. Brookline stalled out on their next drive and then Braintree put together a sustained 73 yard drive that ended in a six yard scamper to the end zone by Cam Grieve. We now start the second quarter. Brookline with a crucial third and five from their own 42. Bit of confusion on Brookline's side it seems. They got two receivers on either side. Harais moves to the right of Baldwin. Baldwin takes a snap, steps back. He's in trouble, avoids the rush, starts to run to his left. He's running out of room, and he's got nowhere to go, and he's taken down. That was Garrity on the pursuit, it would seem. Had a little bit of help from his friends closing off the gap there, and this is a big fourth down for the Warriors. Loss of about one on that play. One yard sack by Braintree. Gives Brookline fourth and six yards to go. They're gonna go for it. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Baldwin takes a snap, he rolls to his right. And he runs out of room immediately and gets taken down. That'll be a turnover on downs. After a big fourth down sack by Lannon, and it looks like we got a player down. I think that is th is that Baldwin. I think that might be Oscar Baldwin. So the training staff will look over this injured player. I think regardless of which side you're rooting for, you certainly hope that he's okay. Looks like they might be looking at, at the right leg. Braintree defense stood tall to put an end to that drive. Finishing with back-to-back -back sacks as now this player is back on his feet. And I was wrong, it's not Baldwin, it's Palayo Harais. He's got a noticeable limp as he comes off the field. So Brookline's starting running back. We'll see how he is. Hopefully he's okay and good to return to the game. In the meantime, Braintree takes over at the Brookline 39 yard line. Their third time out of four drives starting in Brookline territory. A bit of confusion as one of their last offensive linemen comes in to join the fray. Braintree in the flex bone again. Send a man in motion. Tellier gives to the motion man and he runs to the right. He's got a big hole to go through and he barrels ahead for a nice gain of about six yards. That was Luongo once again. Steve Luongo has had a number of nice long runs, including the 34-yard touchdown run on Braintree's second drive. The score, Braintree 21, Brookline 6. About 10 and a half minutes left here in the second quarter. After the seven-yard run by Luongo, it is now second and three. Come out in the flex bone. They send Grieve in motion, but they give to Joyce up the middle, and Joyce has got some room to go. It looks like he's going to get the first down and a lot more. Ultimately, he gets dragged down by Brookline's number two, Adrian Pinto. But Henry Joyce gets the first down conversion for the Womps. They move ahead to the Brookline 22 yard line.
Kelly are in shotgun. They send Grieve in motion again. They give to Grieve, but then a second handoff to Luongo, and Luongo's got some room to run. He pushes the pile ahead inside the 15-yard line. Braintree with some minor trickeration there. James Tellier handed the ball off to Cam Grieve, who then handed the ball off to Steve Luongo, who piled ahead for another first down. First and 10 from the Brookline 11 yard line. They send Grieve in motion, and they give to Joyce, and Joyce gets grabbed and hauled to the ground. A nice effort by Brookline's, I believe that's number 40, Jack O'Brien. So the first big run stuff of the day for the Warriors as Braintree's been winning the Battle of the Trenches thus far. Well, it looks like we've also got a personal foul against Braintree, so that's going to send them back 10 yards. So even though the run went nowhere, they ended up losing a lot more. So the first and 20, ball on about the 23-yard line. Braintree sticking to the flex bone. They send Johnson in motion this time, and they give to Johnson. He finds a hole, goes through, breaks a tackle, and it looks like he's going to go. He's going to go. Touchdown, Braintree. A 22-yard rushing touchdown for Mario Franciosa Johnson. Braintree has got its fourth rushing touchdown of the day and a 27-6 lead over Brookline. Snap is down and the kick is up for the PAT and it is good. Ryan Brooks now two of three on PATs as Braintree continues to extend its lead over Brookline, 28 to six. Eight minutes, 24 seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. And Braintree is pulling away here using a dominant and well-rounded running offense. They've had four different players score on the ground so far today. If I recall correctly, the first score came from Henry Joyce, about 14 yards out, then the 34-yard run by Steve Luongo, and a six-yarder by Cam Grieve, and now the 22-yarder by Mario Franciosa Johnson. Now Brooks getting ready for another kickoff. Sends a bit of a line drive at one hops and is picked up by the Brookline returner. I think this is Adrian Bryant scampering around. He found a bit of a hole, but ultimately gets taken down. Bryant's return gets stopped at around the 35-yard line. So once again, Brookline starting in the same range. They've started just about all of their drives between their own 30 and 40-yard line. They've had back-to-back -back drives stall out. And I think that might be Harai's back out there. He had to limp off the field at the end of the last drive. So if that's him, it's certainly great to see him back. They fake the handoff, throw a quick slant to Caetano Drinkwater for a positive gain. 
And if I'm Brookline, that's that's a perfect solution to what's been going on thus far this game. Braintree's been getting great penetration with their defensive line, getting to the quarterback. And those quick passes will get you down the field. So they now come out empty backfield, second and four from the 42. Baldwin takes a snap, drops back, runs to his left. He's going to run out of room. He ultimately unloads the throw. Did he hit his man? It was intended for Adrian Pinto, but they're going to say it falls incomplete. So again, a desperate throw on the run. Couldn't quite be hauled in by Adrian Pinto. And it'll be third down and four yards to go for Brookline. Two receivers on either side of Baldwin. Is running back to his right. Takes the snap, drops back, throws a screen out for the running back. It's caught. He's going to run, and he's going to make the first down. That's number 26 for Brookline, Cameron Lazama. So Lazama appears to be taking the place of an injured Palayo Harais. And he makes a nice catch and run out of the backfield to convert the first down, get Brookline to midfield. Man in motion, that's Pinto. Baldwin takes the snap, fakes the, throw, fakes the run, and throws it out for Pinto, but misses his target. And it'll be second and 10 for Brookline. Seven oh three left in the half. Brookline trailing Braintree 28 to six, second and 10 at midfield. Two receivers on either side of Baldwin. Takes the snap, drops back. The rush is coming and he cannot escape. He's gonna go down. Sacked on the play by Braintree's number 52. That is Jeffy Lee who came up with the sack there. So third and 17 at Brookline's own 43 yard line now. Baldwin takes a snap, drops back, throws across the middle, and oh, just missed Caetano Drinkwater. So once again, the Brookline offense stalls out. They managed to get a first down this time. But then their fortunes ran out. A botched screen pass, a seven yard sack, and a missed connection across the middle. Matt Richardson lines up to punt. He sends it away. High in the air, Garrity deciding to back off. He's getting a favorable Brookline bounce and roll. And they ultimately down it inside the 25. Punt bounces have been going in favor of Brookline these past couple punts, but right now that's the only thing that's been going in Brookline's favor. The home, ta uh, the home team, Braintree Womps, currently lead the visiting Warriors 28 to six. 6.05 left in the second quarter. can hear during this uh, stoppage in play, I think they said it was a water break for both teams. You can hear Braintree's coach talk about 
how the defense has got the Brookline quarterback running for his life. He's not wrong. And now after the break, the Braintree offense comes back out. Their run-heavy flexbone offense has been running like a well-oiled machine thus far. Four drives, four touchdowns from four different players. James Tellier in the shotgun. Man in motion. They give to the motion man. I believe that's Luongo who cuts up the middle and ultimately gets dragged down. That was Brookline's, I believe, number 50, Damian Halfkenny. Who got the tackle there. Stopped Luongo after about a five or six yard gain. Second and four from the 29 yard line. And they give to the motion man again, cuts up the middle. He's dragging a tackler quite a few extra yards. The ball comes out, but I think they blew it dead anyway. Couldn't quite see who the ball carrier was. Didn't get a good look at his jersey number. But either way, he gets first down for the Womps. They get a fresh set of downs at their own 37-yard line. Send a man in motion again, but this time they give to the fullback. I believe that is Joyce piling ahead. He's carrying some people, and he's carrying them for a first down. That might not have been Joyce. That might have actually been either Ryan Brooks or perhaps number 22, Ryan Boyle. Hard to tell. Braintree likes to mix and match their backs a lot in this offense in today's game thus far. Either way, it's first and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Take the snap, they give to the motion man, and he gets tackled behind the line, and he's gonna get dragged down. Big tackle by Brookline's Damian Halfkenny. As he dragged down Ryan Boyle on the carry. A four yard loss, it's now second and 14. The first negative play from the Braintree offense thus far today. Clock ticking down. We've got about three minutes, 20 seconds left here in the first half. Braintree coming out second and 14. Send Grieve in motion, and they give to Grieve. Grieve runs to the left. He's got a hole to work with, speeding through, pushing ahead, completely undoes the loss from the last play, and he's going to be close to a first. They might give him the first. We'll see where they spot it. They're going to say he's just short of the first, so it's going to be third and about one to go. At about the Brookline 43.
And they're showing a different formation. Braintree now coming out in the T. Hands it off. Cuts up the middle. He's got room to run. Shakes off a tackle. He's still on his feet. He's still going. And he's ultimately dragged down inside the 10. And we got a flag at the end of the play. That was a stellar run for Braintree. But we'll see what the flag is. Oh, they're going to call a horse collar on Brookline. And so that's going to be about a half the distance to the goal kind of penalty. That was Ryan Brooks, number 43, on the carry there. Getting Braintree deep inside Brookline territory. And then the illegal horse collar tackle gets them even closer. They're now down just inside the five. They come out in the T formation again. Snap, they give. I believe that's Luongo again. Piling ahead, pushing it, and he's in. Four yard touchdown run. Steve Luongo with his second score of the day. At least I'm pretty sure it was Luongo. Might have actually been Henry Joyce. I actually think it was. I think it was Henry Joyce who scored on that one from four yards out. Now Braintree with a 34 to six lead is lining up for the PAT. The kick is up and they say it is good. Ryan Brooks good on the kick once again. Of course he was a big part of that offensive drive with that huge run. That combined with the horse collar tackle put them inside the Brookline five yard line. And then Henry Joyce finished the job with his second score of the day. 35 to six, now the score. And we are inside two minutes now. Minute 56, it reads on the clock. Here in the second quarter. Brooks getting ready to kick it away once again. Signals and kicks. Got some air under this kick for a change. It skips away from Bryant for a second, but he picks it up, starts to run, gets around one guy, but can't get around another, and he's not getting far. This will be Brookline's worst starting position thus far today as they start inside their own 20. After scoring on the first drive of the game, the Brookline offense showed some real promise, but they've stalled out on every drive since then. They come out and shotgun now. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap to Baldwin, fakes the handoff, runs to his left. He's running out of room again. He's just going to try and run with it and see what he can get. And he's going to get a couple. So a short gain there. May have got him about four yards as he gets him from the 18 to about the 22. With the ball now on the left hash, they send three receivers out to the right and one to the left. And of course, one running back to the right of Baldwin. He takes the snap, steps back, throws across the middle and just misses drink water. The throw was just a step ahead of the receiver as Drinkwater couldn't pull it in. It'll be second and about seven to go. Two 
two receivers on each side now. Baldwin takes the snap, steps back, moves to his left, running out of room, pump fakes, fakes out his man, and then throws it. He's throwing it deep. Oh my God, did he catch that? I think he caught it. He did catch it. Big catch by number 21, Donnell O'Neal. His first catch of the day. Hats off to Oscar Baldwin for a nice pump fake that kept him alive long enough to unload that throw. Baldwin takes a snap, rolls to his right, stops, unloads, and it bounces at the feet of his receiver. He was aiming for Jack Altman. Pass falls incomplete. Brookline trying to put something together here at the end of the half. Minute seven left to go. 35 to six is the score. Brookline's going to come out with an empty backfield now on second and 10 on the Braintree 48-yard line. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Baldwin takes the snap, steps back, running out of time. He's going to get sacked immediately. Or, oh, he almost got away for a second. Oh, the ball came out. But they're going to say he was down. Ball is still with Brookline, but... Brutal sack. I mean, the whole caravan came to just try and crush Baldwin there. And the clock is running. Less than 40 seconds left. Brookline standing around trying to get the play call. It's going to be second down and very long. They're all the way back at their own 40, or third down and very long, actually. Baldwin takes the snap, steps back. Unloads for a long pass. He's looking for Altman, and he can't haul it in. Fourteen point eight seconds left here in the second quarter, and it looks like Brookline's not going to find the end zone. Brookline now calls timeout. So one last short break before we end this half. And a rough half it has been for the Brookline Warriors. The Braintree Womps lead 35 to six. Womps have found the end zone on all five of their offensive drives. Including the extra one they got to start the game after the turnover on the opening kickoff. Brookline comes back out. It looks like they're gonna be in punt formation. Matt Richardson has had a couple of nice punts. In the last couple possessions. Cam Garrity once again back to receive for Braintree. So it'll be number three punting to number three. High snap is taken by Richardson. He punts it away. It's caught by Garrity and he decides to take off. And he's got a hole and he's gonna run with it. He's running down the left, he's got one man to beat and he beats him. He's going down the sideline. It looks like he's gonna go all the way. Touchdown Braintree. Cam Garrity ends the first half with an exclamation mark. A punt return touchdown. There was a man right on him as he was receiving the punt. It seemed like the kind of situation where maybe you call for a fair catch or maybe you just let the ball go. He's been letting the ball go the past couple of punts, but he decided to go for the gutsy play on that one, took the ball and ran with it. And once he shook off that first guy, he just had a huge hole to run through. And he had some blockers in front of him and he 
He tiptoed down the left sideline and found the end zone. 41 to six as Ryan Brooks lines up for the PAT, the last play before we go into halftime. Snaps down, kick is up. And no good, he missed wide left. So that will end the first half here at Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts. The score, the hosting Braintree Womps 41, the visiting Brookline Warriors 6. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, live at Braintree High School. And I'm going to take a mute break here at halftime, but I'll be back with the third quarter of play so stay tuned.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan here to bring you the second half of this high school football game between the hosting Braintree Womps and the visiting Brookline High Warriors. Braintree run heavy offense out of the flexbone formation has been running on high all game long so far. They've had six drives and six touchdowns. Two by Henry Joyce. Well, actually, no, five drives and five touchdowns, and then one on a punt return by Cam Garrity that ended the first half. And now Braintree will get the opening kickoff and if they make it one more touchdown and make the extra point then we'll have a 42 point deficit and by league rules we'll be on a running clock. So Brook Lions Matt Richardson lines up to kick this ball away and second half is underway. High flying kick is received by Braintree. Returner is taking off and running with it. And he shakes out of one tackle, but then gets pushed out of bounds. That was Braintree's number 88, Dominic Dionisio. Braintree has had five rushing touchdowns from four different players so far today. They've had two from Henry Joyce and one each from Steve Luongo, Cam Grieve, and Mario Franciosa Johnson. So first and ten, they come out in the flex bone once again. They send Luongo in motion and they give to Luongo, but he fumbles it. He just has to fall on the ball. And an uncharacteristically sloppy start for the Womps as they take a loss on the first play. They lose about three or four yards on that play, get pushed back to about their own 32. Second and 13. James Tellier in shotgun, sends a man in motion, gives to the motion man again, and he gets dragged down after a short gain. I believe that was Cam Grieve on the carry, tackled by Brookline's number 40, Jack O'Brien. So it looks like a gain of about two by Grieve on that play. So it'll be third down and 11 yards to go. A longer distance than usual for Braintree. Regardless, they stick to the flex bone. Send a man in motion. They give to the motion man, but they do the double handoff. This is Johnson. Johnson is taking off. He spins out of one tackle and he's got the first down after a long run. Big third down run by Mario Franciosa Johnson on the double handoff. They used that once in the first half to great effect. And it worked like a charm again. It looked like they almost flubbed the handoff on the second handoff. And that could have uh, spelled disaster. Well, relative disaster for Braintree. But instead they get the first down and they get the ball to midfield. First and ten at midfield. Johnson in motion and he gets the give and he runs out to the right. He's got some room to go and he gets a gain of about six before being taken down by Matt Richardson.
So back-to-back -back strong runs by Mario Franciosa Johnson. Makes it now second and four at the Brookline 44 yard line. Man in motion, Tellier takes the snap, gives to the motion man, runs to the left, cuts up the middle, finds a bit of a hole, scampers ahead. This is Steve Luongo and he manages to drag himself all the way down to the Brookline 33 yard line for a first down. So a run of about 11 yards there by Luongo. He had a number of big runs in the first half, highlighted, of course, by his 34 yard touchdown run, the second touchdown of the game for Braintree at the time. Send a man in motion. They give to the motion man who runs out to the left. I think it's Cam Grieve who gets tackled along the sideline by Matt Richardson and Adrian Pinto. And Grieve looks like he's hurt. You could hear the collision there. And Grieve was limping a little bit. He's being looked at by the trainer. And once again, regardless of which team you're rooting for, you certainly hope that he's okay. Out of the flex bone, they give to Johnson again. Johnson's got some room to run. He's still going. He's not going to be taken down. He's going to get the end zone. We got a flag on the play. We'll see what the official call is. Assuming the play stands that the second rushing touchdown of the day for Mario Franciosa Johnson and his second of 20 plus yards. That one came from about 27 yards out. Couldn't quite see what the penalty was. It seemed like they signaled that it was against Braintree, but regardless, the touchdown still counts, and Ryan Brooks will be going for another PAT. Snap, holds down, kick is up, and it is good. 48-6 to six is now the score, and with a 42-point lead, we officially get a running clock. If you take a look at the scoreboard here, you'll see that even though play is not going on right now, the clock continues to run. And that is league rules after a team takes a 42 or greater point lead at any point in the second half. From that point on, the game clock will run. And so Braintree's dominance continues. A sixth drive, a sixth rushing touchdown. And Mario Franciosa Johnson becomes the second player from Braintree to get his second touchdown of the day. It looks like we're going to have a different kicker from Ryan Brooks's Jacob Kelly, number 75. He squibs it. It's juggled. And Brookline manages to fall on it this time. Brookline has had a rough time with some of these weird bouncing kicks. But this time they recover it and avoid disaster. They start at their own 34. Brookline offense put together a strong drive to start the game. 
finishing with a one-yard quarterback keeper into the end zone by Oscar Baldwin. But since then, they've not been able to consistently move the ball. Baldwin fakes the handoff, throws, and it's deflected. That pass was intended, I believe, for Caetano Drinkwater, but it was deflected just beyond the line of scrimmage by the Braintree defense. It'll be second and 10. Three receivers to the left, one to the right, one back to the left of Baldwin, who takes the snap, rolls to his left, throws, and misses his man. That was Drinkwater again that he was aiming for. And so it'll be now third and 10 for the Warriors. Brookline comes out with two receivers on either side now. Baldwin takes the snap, drops back, surveys, throws long, and overthrows his man. He was aiming either for Adrian Pinto or number 10, Jack Altman. So three straight missed throws leads to a three and out for the Warriors. Wind's starting to whip up just in time for a punt from Matt Richardson. Punt is away, and that's gonna be juggled by the return man. They try and dive on it, and it looks like Braintree is safely recovered. That was Ryan Boyle, number 22, who initially juggled it. Like I said, some wind whipping through just as the punt was getting off. And so Braintree will take over We are down to just over three minutes left here in the third quarter, thanks to the running clock. Braintree leading Brookline 48 to six. They come out in their usual flex bone formation. Send a man in motion, but they give to the fullback who gets stopped right at the line. I think that uh, that looks like number 40 getting his first carry for Braintree. Let me see if I can find him here on the roster. There he is, Perry Lane. Perry Lane with his first carry, and it's a loss of two. Ball now on the 31-yard line, second and 12. And in motion, take the snap, they give to the fullback again. S tries to bounce to the outside, but doesn't find a lot of room. Taken down by Adrian Pinto, that's Perry Lane again. Bit of pushing and shoving at the end of the play. And so a short gain of about two or three yards. So Perry Lane manages to undo the lost yards from the previous play. So it'll be third down and about eight yards to go. Less than a minute left in the third as the running clock continues to run down. 
man in motion. They give to the motion man. That's number 21, and he's tackled behind the line. Nice tackle by Matt Richardson. That was number 21 for Braintree, Sabijori Jean-Baptiste, who was getting the carry there. Braintree bringing out their second unit offense. And Brookline got to get some nice defensive plays there. As Ryan Brooks now gets ready for the first punt of the game. But it looks like they might just let the clock run out here for the third quarter. And that'll do it. That is the end of the third quarter. As you can see, the effect the running clock has I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan live at Braintree High School in Braintree, Mass. And through three quarters, the score, the hosting Braintree Womps, 48. The visiting Brookline Warriors, 6. And we got, we got some rain coming down now. One quarter left to play, and Mother Nature is starting to rear her head in here. Actually, this isn't rain. This is hail. This is very small pieces of hail that we're getting here at the field in Braintree High School. It sounds like it's stopped. I've got my sweatshirt draped over my laptop just in case. And Ryan Brooks sends the punt away to start the fourth quarter. And it'll be downed and Brookline will take over. So that was a weird between quarters weather event, I guess. This game has certainly had its fair share of uh, weirdness. And the Brookline offense comes out, the clock running. We're already down to about 11 minutes. As Brookline comes out, first down, two receivers on either side, back to the left of Baldwin. Takes the snap, decides to take it himself, and he churns his legs up ahead for a first down. And some big winds gusting through. As Brookline moves the chains off the quarterback keeper by Oscar Baldwin. Two receivers on either side. Baldwin takes the snap, drops back, surveys, throws to his left. He's got his man who gets hit immediately. That is Adrian Pinto on the catch. Taken down by Cam Garrity. And we've got more pint-sized hail coming down here in Braintree. You just got to love New England weather, don't you? Second and six from the Braintree 49-yard line. Baldwin takes the snap, fakes the give. Quick throw. He hits Drinkwater. Did he hold on?
So third and six, they're going to say that was an incomplete pass. Drinkwater couldn't quite haul it in. Baldwin takes the snap, drops back, surveys, looking, throws to his right, aims for his man, it's broken up. That pass was aimed for Adrian Pinto. It is broken up by Mario Franciosa Johnson. Fourth down and six for Brookline. We got about just over eight and a half minutes left in this ball game. Brookline trying to make something happen, get their first touchdown since the first quarter. Baldwin takes the snap, he drops back, looking, looking, running out of time now, he's gotta throw it, he throws it incomplete. That pass was intended for Caetano Drinkwater, but again well covered and could not find his man. Just over eight minutes to go, and now just under eight minutes to go, and Braintree takes over. Ball is at the Braintree 49. The Wamps lead the Warriors 48 to six. Out of the flex bone. Man in motion, this is number 25. Who runs to the left, cuts up the middle, and he's got some daylight here. He ultimately gets tripped up and runs it all the way inside the Brookline 30. A stellar run there from James Lee. All the way down to the Brookline 28 yard line. I think they called personal foul, possibly unsportsmanlike on Brookline, but the penalty was declined after the long run by James Lee. Gets the Wamps down to the Brookline 28 yard line. First and 10. They send Lee in motion. They give to Lee, he runs to the left and gets dragged down from behind by Jack O'Brien. Less than six minutes left to go on this running clock. Braintree trying to see if they can add one more score and pile on to what is already a 42 point lead. Some strong winds gusting through and my hat's off to all the family members who remain in attendance here at this frigid game as the snap is fumbled, picked up by Tellier and Tellier is going to try and run with it. He's not gonna get far and he's ultimately gonna be stopped. Let's see where they place the ball. Amazingly, despite the botched snap, I think he actually gained some yards there. His quarterback, James Tellier Gains about two yards. Ball now at the 21 yard line on Brookline's side. We're down to four and a half minutes.
Man in motion. They give to the motion man. He tries to cut up the middle and gets dragged down immediately. I believe that was Jack O'Brien again. This is going to be close. It looks like uh, we're going to have fourth and short here. It's going to be fourth and about one or two yards to go. Three forty left on the clock and ticking. Forty eight to six, the brain tree lead. Going for it on fourth down. Man in motion. They give to the motion man. This is James Lee. He's got a hold to the left, and did he get it? I think he got it. He got the first down. Ball down to the Brookline 17 yard line. Brain tree letting the clock run down as they take their time between plays. 2.30 left to go. Talir takes the snap. He gives to the man right behind him and he gets dragged down immediately by a pair of players. I believe that was Matt Richardson and Jack Altman on the tackle. Clock keeps running past the two minutes. Second and 11 at the Brookline 18 yard line. Time ticking away at this point, Brookline just wants to keep Braintree out of the end zone one more time. Snap the give to James Lee off the motion and not much room to go as he gets dragged down. No gain. It's going to be third and 11. Minute 10 and counting. Third down and 13 to go, actually, as a two-yard loss on that last play. Send a man in motion, but they give to the fullback. The fullback bounces out to the left, starts to run, gets a short gain, but not that far. That was Braintree's number 40, Perry Lane. With the la what looks to be the last play of the game as five, four, three, two, one, and zero. That is going to do it here at Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts. The final score, the hosting Braintree Womps, 48. The visiting Brookline Warriors, six. Well, four more hail falls. I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. You made braving the cold worth it. Once again, that final score, Braintree, Braintree 48, Brookline 6. I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan.
from Braintree High School in Braintree, Massachusetts, signing off. Have a good day, everyone.